Today's video is a request from you guys. So if you didn't know, if you comment down below or you go into the community tab of this channel, you can let me know what videos you wanna see in the future and I will make those videos for you because this channel is for you. The only reason I exist is for you, literally. I have a day job, complete hobby is my YouTube. So anyways, today's video, we're gonna be talking about winterizing perennials and I know I know this question because I get asked this question so, so often. There's two scenarios. There's the people that live in extreme cold climates, zone three, Saskatoon. We can get wicked, wicked cold here. And so we end up with winter burn is what we call it. And the other scenario is people that live in areas that have Chinooks or heavy levels of freeze thaw cycles. Meaning we go from the depths of winter to basically spring then back into the depths of winter and this can cause so much damage to plants so the question is how do we overwinter plants in a climate that is always changing is never the same and we end up with winter kill of our beloved perennials so today's video we are going to be talking about exactly that so i did a video last month i don't know how many weeks ago but it was on when to stop fertilizing your garden and you want to stop fertilizing here in fall People will say the contrary to that, but it's incredibly important in our cold climates to stop. The reason for this is new growth is more susceptible to disruption in from the freezing. And this can happen above ground growth, which we won't see much of this time of year. Below ground growth, however, particularly with perennials, we tend to see, we don't see, but the plant is doing a lot of in the fall. It's expanding its root biomass and fertilizer in any form, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, micronutrients, you name it, will expedite that growth, in particular nitrogen. And these new growths of roots tend to be more susceptible to winter kill. Now, the damage that can come from this will obviously stunt the plant long-term, but it also can cause a enough damage that it will begin to rot and it will rot the, the roots inwards, eventually potentially get to the crown and ultimately kill off your plant. So cut the fertilizer ASAP. If you didn't watch that original video right now, stop, no more. So the next thing is whether or not to cut the plant back. Um, so there's arguments for and there's arguments against. So I scoured the interwebs to find people's arguments for it, to leave the debris in place. So the debris has critters in it that are beneficial, pea, uh, peas, bees, ladybugs, that sort of thing. Um, and then it's easy to see the perennials. Another really common one, actually, I have a master gardener that lives two, three doors down. He's a really nice man. Um, he always says, leave your, leave your debris in place, particularly the foliage type based ones. So things like hostas, for example, or ferns. The reason is you can tell where they are and then you know not to damage that soil in the spring. And then the next reason is uh, snow capture. So I've done videos on why you should or uh, leave or remove it for annuals, but this is uh, particular to perennials. So snow capture is a reason to leave both an annual and it's a reason to leave obviously a perennial. So the argument to remove uh, plant debris is the pest. So if you have powdery mildew, uh, thrips, slugs, snails, soil borne problems, disease, um, fungal, bacterial, or pest wise, obviously, a great idea to remove the other one is it looks neater it looks cleaner so it looks you know more appealing to the eye particularly if you have a front lawn set up as well as it's easier to mulch the space appropriately when the debris is removed now there's a middle ground and the middle ground is probably the route i would take um, in particular if we want to exponentially increase the possibility of overwintering our perennials uh, long term and that simply involves cutting the plant back so somewhere around six ish inches of the plant is showing in the event of things like hostas or ferns if you have no disease issues i would actually just leave that plant debris in place if you could trim back some of that uh, plant debris that is ideal and then don't like compost it just kind of put it in a pile off to the side you won't damage the bugs that may be overwintering in that space um, just put it in a big pile and leave it till the spring so that is one thing to consider now 
once you cut everything back, you can mulch properly. So if you have a plant that is more susceptible to winter damage, so if you have an azalea or um, a hydrangea or roses, for example, then you can mulch. Now your mulch is your next thing you want to look at. So mulch is important and the type of mulch you use is important. So the type of mulch you choose wants to have a lot of either surface area or airspace. So airspace is in the case of things like straw. So wheat straw, something that's hollow that if you can blow air through the straw piece, that would be considered something with airspace. And that is a great insulator. The air is what insulates ultimately the plant. The other alternative is something with a lot of surface area. So shredded leaves in particular, not just whole leaves, shredded leaves, either with a lawnmower or a leaf blower, whatever the case is, and or uh, cut grass. So if you freshly cut grass, you pop that on top. What you wanna do, if you can, is use uh, wood shingles, um, use plastic containers, five gallon bale buckets, coffee tins, whatever the case is, old planters that you've emptied the soil from, flipping them upside down. You could use um, burlap, anything like that. You want to fill the plant with, with leaves. So put it in all the nooks and crannies and you want to cover the soil surface outside of where you predict the root ball to be. So if you look at a plant and if you were to take your hands to the widest branches of it and put your hands down, go out about two inches from that and you should be encompassing your root ball as well. And you want, you know, five inches on that soil surface minimum. And in ideal world, you would be able to completely pile that plant with the leaf debris and then pop something over top of it. You don't want it enclosed. This is really important. So if you're gonna do a five gallon bale bucket, the bottom has to be cut off. If you're gonna do a planter, it needs to have a drainage hole. If you're going to do um, burlap or uh, some sort of fabric, you're okay, because that's breathable. Don't do plastic, garbage bags, plastic bags, poly, nothing like that. We want something that breathes. And this is important because the heat that could come in this early fall, well, things are still sunny and it's kind of warm outside is not ideal. Combined with the spring, <laughs> we end up with a ton of heat uh, from the sun, from solar uh, features. And throughout the winter, we want breathability. We don't want condensation uh, to happen and that sort of thing. So we want holes in whatever we choose to use. Very, very important. And you're just going to pile that into place. People with Chinooks in particular, you really want to make sure that root space is covered. So if you're going to go down the plant two inches out, maybe consider going an extra inch and then covering that with leaves at least five inches on that soil surface. This is important. The reason for it is because you guys are more susceptible to heaving and heaving while it pushes the root ball out of the soil surface or out of the soil um, solution, I guess you could say, or the, the, the soil area profile. It also can really disrupt roots, do a lot of pulling and ripping, which is incredibly harmful to the plant. So the more mulch we put on that soil surface in particular, the better. So when the temperature goes down, it's not a sudden shock. And when the temperature goes up, it takes a little bit longer for that soil temp to also rise. And this should, should save your plants from just early growth, which is harmful, um, along with sudden freezing, which is equally as harmful. Now, the last tip is if you're in open space, so if you have plants in your front yard where there's lots of uh, street room, if you're on an acreage, a homestead, a farm, is to protect your plant from open spaces. Now, this can come in the form of burlap. We commonly see burlap wrapped around evergreen type plants. T is to prevent the winter burn, which is not caused, common misconception, is it solely caused by the cold of winter, uh, which yes, the cold of winter is harmful, but the wind is equally as harmful um, along with snow. So snow that hits, uh, if it's in particular like a sleet snow or a wet snow, weighing down the branches and breaking said branches is harmful. And so burlap can actually prevent that. So wrapping the plant in burlap is an option. The other option, if you don't have that, is to put up a snow fence um, or some sort of blockage, a tarp, you name it. We want some breathability. So we don't want to use plastic. Again, no garbage bags or uh, poly 
but something that's breathable. So blankets, tarps, burlap are all acceptable. Panels of wood, kind of like a little box around the plant, also helpful. Um, and that would be in the case of things that are more in the open. If you have shrubs kind of in an enclosed environment that's, you know, protected by fences or trees or homes or buildings, this is maybe not as much of a concern unless you know wind really travels through that space. So that is something to look at as well. I personally, my evergreen plants are much, much too large to burlap. So I don't burlap them. Um, and this is more specific to baby plants. Once your plants get a little bit larger, we tend to not see that as, as often. So definitely something to look at there. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video on overwrenching perennials. Good luck this year. I hope everything turns out in the spring. <laughs> if you want to learn a video on how to overwinter perennials in containers, I will be doing that very, very soon. So stay tuned for that. Um, and comment, like, subscribe, and I'll talk to you later. Bye.